It's family time. <laughs> oh, it's been too long. I know. This woman today is stunning. I mean, in so many ways. She is an actress who has done commercials, plays, movies. She's a dancer. Um, her credits include Glee, Without a Trace. And one of my favorite movies, Hamill. She is a wife, a mother, and she is a dear friend. Lexi Marman! Yay. Uh, <laughs> oh, good to see you. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. It's been too long. Too long. Um, oh, by the way, we have the lovely Hope here today. Uh, Hope Simon, who will be interpreting. Um, so thank you I, so much. I love um, my language, ASL, beautiful language. And I can, um, I was hoping it would be okay if I get that job to beautiful Hope because I feel like if I sign and talk at the same time during this interview, Tim Con, always there's always something missing with the language. So I hope that's okay that I get that to hope to take over for me and be my hand. Yeah. Hey, thank you. So my dear, hello. Hi, handsome. I, oh, thank you. So, <laughs> oh. So where does this beauty come from? Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No. Oh my gosh, you know, one of the best compliments that somebody gave me recently, they saw a picture of me and she knew my mom. And she said, Lexi, you are looking more and more like your mom every day. And in that one picture, I was so happy because I was at the beach and I was with my family and it was in the middle of all this crazy pandemic that's happening right now. And I was just so happy because the sun was setting and there was like a sense of a little bit of normalcy. And I was so happy and I was smiling and the picture was taken and somebody posted it and one of my mom's friends saw the picture and she said, Lexi, I thought that was your mom. And to me, that was just like the biggest compliment ever because my mom, was, to me, was the most beautiful person I've ever known, you know, yeah. so that. Uh, she definitely was beautiful. Yeah. She definitely was. And you are, oh. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's interesting when people do come up to you and say, oh, you remind me, you look like your dad and this and that. Yes. And going, yes. Oh, I love it. My dad has like the big, mom, we call it the Marmon face. It's right. Like a big, huge Marmon face. And unfortunately, my kids got it too. So it's really funny. And <laughs> it's the big Marmon face. And, um, it's so cool because my dad's from a small town in Sydney, yeah. Montana. And yeah. so I remember one time I went back there and I was walking in the grocery store and it's such a small, small city. And so I was walking in the grocery store and somebody came up to me and said, are you Kent Marmon's daughter? Like, yeah, yeah. So it's so cool how we have that same shape of face. And I used to not like it growing up. I'd be like, why oh. is my face so big? But then I remember somebody said, oh, you know, all actors, um, are short and tiny and they had these big faces and I was like hey that's me let's do it so. well yeah <laughs> that's where you get your other beauty from because he was such a sweetheart as well yeah he was he was um, very generous and I loved it he was such a good listener yeah like my dad was such a good listener I lost both of my parents and um and my dad was such a good listener because the ironic thing is that he was so quiet and he really listened. He remembered what you said. Like, I remember I would say things like, oh man, you know, I always would get lost here and stuff. And then next week, my dad would be like, oh, I have something for you. And I would look and be like a GPS thing for my car. Yeah. Wow, you know, he always listened. And yeah. um, I thought that that's a, a beautiful trait that not a lot of people have these days, you know? Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's ab all about listening. Mm-hmm. Um, I, because I'm deaf, you know, so um, in college, I was joined a sorority for like three months. I yeah. realized it wasn't for me, but um, I joined a sorority and I got an award for being the best listener. And 
I thought it was hilarious, but one of my friends was like, no, like, see, you really pay attention to people. Like, you listen to people, you remember things when people say, oh, you know, I'm going through this with my family and stuff. Next time I see them, I try to make an effort. Oh, how's that thing work out, you know, with your family? Yeah. So it's funny how listening and hearing mean two different things. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it, when you were seven years old, something happened at Disneyland, didn't it? Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> a video. I should totally send it to you. I oh, I would love to see that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So they were filming something, okay, underneath the castle at Disney. By the way, I miss Disney so much. I miss it. To me, I feel like the next time I walk up Main Street, I am going to cry. Because to me, Disney is my security blanket in a weird way. It's just like, everything's gonna be okay, you know? Yeah. It's just like my safe place, you know? But um, Disney, so I was uh, seven years old and I was with my family and I was walking through Disney and they were filming a commercial. And of course I thought, ha ha. So I went and jumped in front of the camera while they were filming. And I was just like, you know, I did a funny thing. And then I kind of walked up and they stopped and they looked at me and they said something and they went to go chase me. And I was so scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I ruined the film. Like, what, what was happening? You know, like I'm seven, okay? I'm like, what's happening? So I sneak into this like a little ornament at villain shop that's on the right hand side of the castle. And I sneak in there and I see they get my mom. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna get kicked out. We're gonna get kicked out of Disney because I ruined the commercial. And they actually went up to my mom and they said, bring her, we want to interview her. We want her to be in part of our commercial. And so my mom was like, oh, Lexi, Lexi, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, why, why are you doing this to me? Why am I, am I going to jail? What, what? So they put me in front and they were like, so, you know, what's your, what's your favorite ride here at Disney? And I completely, I don't know why I said this, but I was like, oh, um, you mean the ride that I like? I'm the matter. And then when it was all over, my mom was like, you hate that ride. <laughs> what? Why'd you stay in the Matterhorn? I was like, I don't know. It was the only thing that came to my head. But I was just like, oh, with confidence, you know. Oh, you mean the ride that I like? Oh, um, the Matterhorn. You know, it was just so funny. And my mom was on the phone at home when it came on TV. And she was talking to somebody. And all of a sudden, she saw me on TV. And she screamed, bloody murder, screamed, dropped the phone, ran and recorded it. And that poor person was like, uh... What happened? You know, are you okay? What happened? So it was just really funny. But I got the bug. Was that, that when you got the bug tagged? Yeah, that did. And then after that, they were filming um, Mighty Ducks 2 at the Anaheim Pond. Right. And so my mom was like, you want to be an extra? I was like, yes, let's go. And so I went and I was like watching all how they did the film and the movie. And I really wanted to be a part of it so bad, like my heart hurt because I wasn't there with everybody. And I must have been like, I don't know, 10, 12 years old. And my mom was like, all right, we got our free lunch. Let's go, time to go. And I'm like, no, I want to stay. I want to see this. I want to be a part of this, you know? So, yeah, oh anything God. just to be on set. You know, there's a question I always ask people. Yeah. I say, you know, if you could be anywhere in the world right now, in this moment, anywhere in the world that would bring you complete happiness, where would you be? Are you asking me? <laughs> David Zimmerman, I'm asking you. Okay, I had two thoughts. Okay. But I would love to be on the Greek islands. <laughs> <gasps> yes, of course. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have to tell you something about that place. Yeah. You been? Oh, no, I haven't been, but I've heard amazing things about that place. Yeah. Um, my response would be on set, anywhere on set. Just being near the, the action, the cameras. Just, I feel alive when yeah. I'm on set, you know? And whatever people answer, then that's where they should be. Life is too short. Life is too short to not be where you need to be. You need to be sitting on that balcony in that photo. You know, and all this is over. By the way, that place, or was it called again? And it was the famous um, 
it's all white, white building. I know, San, is it Santor, Santoria? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so apparently, I, I have hope probably- I'm mispronouncing but, that. Oh yeah, um, apparently there's um, a thing where when the sun is about ready to set, everybody in that village walks up those steps and of course there's some like donkey poop, you have to be careful with donkey poop. And stuff. But I, I, I've heard this we all love donkey poop. Away. Yeah, donkey poop. And you walk up to the steps and you sit and everybody watches the sun set. And once the sun sets, there's a wind that comes in from behind you and just whoosh, covers the whole city right when the sun sets. And I've heard it's magic. I've heard it's magic. So, yeah, uh, I have to experience that one day. If uh, any of you have gone and if you've experienced that, let me know. I <laughs> will, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. And when, when Disneyland does open up after the quarantine and we have the vaccine, I want to go with you and your family. Oh, please. <laughs> please. You know, I mean, it's just, oh, it hurts. It's my happy spot. My mom and I used to work there together at the same time. Oh. So, so fun. We would sit, she would finish her job and I would finish mine yeah. and we'd meet up and watch the fireworks backstage. And then, well, and then from Disney, you went on to the age 13 and you won Best Actress yeah. for your performance of Helen Keller in The Mirror. Oh, yes, yes. Um, ooh, okay, so when I was in middle school, I was the subject of a lot of bullying. I got bullied very badly. And um, I think it was because, <sighs> I, I don't know, but I'm not a bully myself, or I hope I was, never was, but um, it was really one of the toughest years of my life. And um, it was so cool because when the miracle worker was being put on in my junior high, yeah. and I played Helen Keller, it was the first time I actually got respect from some of my peers. And I felt like, wow, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing a good job on this. They're not making fun of me anymore. And so when I went on, I competed. We, um, the Helen Keller show went to Mission Bay High School and did like a small little thing. And I did that and I realized, wow, I, people respect me for my work and acting. And so, that was another layer too that I think that made me really realize how much I loved acting because it made me feel like I could be somebody else. You know, like I could be a person that was not made fun of. Yeah. And so, yeah, and then um, from there, I went to University High School, which is an amazing high school. They have a big deaf um, population and stuff. And I really came into knowing who I really am. And right. I accepted and loved my own deaf identity, you know, well, so, but yeah. And, and ultimately you became Miss Deaf California. Yes, yes, I competed, I was Miss Deaf CSUN first because I went to Cal State Northridge. And then I, from there I went on and I competed Miss Deaf California. And it's a funny story about Miss Deaf California. I am not a pageant girl. Wow. I don't like wearing high heels if <laughs> I have to. Like I am not a pageant person. But um, it was so fun because we made so many memories and connections with people and I really got to know my deaf community. And at the final question, on stage interview question, yeah. was about cochlear implants. And cochlear implants is kind of a, um, a, a, a device where people who are deaf, it works for some people. They can use a cochlear implant to maybe help them hear as much as they, they can but it doesn't work for everyone. It's still, you know, and it, it's got a lot of um, conflict with, you know, is, is, it, is it correct? Oh, should we be doing this? Should we not be doing this? Like it's got a lot of um, um, backlash from all communities about this cochlear implant. So the final question was, do you support a cochlear implant? Yes or no? And that was the final question. And this was back in 1999, right? Right. And so times are a little bit different now. Things are a little bit more accepted. Yeah. Um, everybody said, no, we don't support the cochlear implant. We are who we are. That's who we're supposed to be. And my best friend at the time 
just got a cochlear implant. And she was crying to me saying how she could hear things that she never could hear before. She, she was like, Lexi, why didn't you tell me that you can hear other people pee? <laughs> I had no idea that if you go to a public bathroom, you sit, you can hear other people peeing next to you. I was like, oh my gosh. So I That's saw the happiness. I know. I saw the happiness and the joy from her. So when I was asked that question on stage, I thought of her. And I said, you know what? I support the cochlear implant because there's people out there that it has really benefited, you know, really helped them out. And so I support anybody that wants to make a change for their life and somebody who, something that makes them happy. And so I came off that stage and I was in tears because I was like, I lost. I know I lost. I just told a whole room full of deaf people that I supported something that could make a person not deaf anymore. So I knew I lost. And so when they came on the stage, I was like, you know what, it's okay. And so I stood on stage and they announced my name. And there's an actual picture of me going, Oh I was God. so shocked. I was like, what? What? And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, you know? And then I had so many people come up to me that night saying, Lexi, you know, Shh, I have a cochlear implant. Thank you so much for saying that, you know, thank you. And um, it was just a, yeah, it was just one of those moments in life that I will never forget. And um, the deaf community is such a beautiful community. They're my, they're my family. They make me feel loved and safe, you know? And so um, I just thought that was a beautiful moment for them, how much they uh, have grown, you know, to accept today's technology is right. advancing. And so we gotta, we gotta figure it out and roll with it, you know, right. unfortunately. And um, it's still nice to see that the beauty of the deaf culture is still there. Yeah. And it shows that, you know, I was listening to it and taking it in, and it shows how change can be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't like change. I have a hard time with change. Oh. I do. I do. I like my stability. Oh, you yeah. Know, change is hard. This whole coronavirus thing has been um, a blessing in disguise, I want to say. Because I realize that I'm so busy. I have so many things to do. I have so many things, you know, good places to be and stuff. And then I realized, no, you don't. You don't have places to be. You don't have, you know, things you have to check off your box. You can sit outside and be in the sun for 10 minutes and let the dishes build up. It's okay. It's okay to be still. It's okay to be calm. It's hard. It's really hard, but it's okay. It's like a, for me, I feel like it's a muscle. Mm. More and more you do it, the more easier it becomes. You know, sometimes uh, I, um, I have anxiety and I feel like in those moments where I'm like, <sighs> I have to have a little bit of anxiety. I remind myself, are you breathing? And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not breathing. And I take deep breaths and then it, I'm okay. You know, so it's just like, it's, the coronavirus has really made me be okay with being in the present and be okay with not knowing what's going to happen. But all we do know is that in this moment, right now, I'm okay. We're okay. Well, yeah. you're so in the moment. That is why you're such a, a, an amazing and stunning actress. Because you're, I mean, you bring it to all your work. By the way, I, I you said breath, and I had to show you this. Did I show you this yet? I got this when I was. Oh, oh my goodness! Look at that, isn't that? Oh, amazing? that is gorgeous! I just saw oh. that, and I went, ah, because that's one of my favorite words, of course, as you know. <laughs> I know it's, it's it's so powerful, though. You know that like people don't realize it's a gift. Every moment is a gift. I have seen too many people that I love. I have seen the last breath. Yeah. I have seen the last breath. And it, it, it's such a gift that we, including myself, take advantage of, that we take for granted. Right. You know, we really take for granted. We're only and, yeah. limited with how many breaths we have. So make each one count. 
and to, at their last breath, such an honor to be there at that moment. Yeah. Because that moment is an incredible, powerful moment for yeah. both of you. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, um, uh, it's different. I'm doing different things now because both Justin and I have lost so many people in the past couple of months who we love and care about that I'm, I don't want to say it's not a midlife crisis. I call it a Corona-like crisis where you're just like, life is too short, you know? Right. And um, I actually got a small little puppy that I've always wanted a shift to. So I got oh. another little puppy. And you know what his name is? His name is Bodhi. Bodhi? Bodhi, yes. And Bodhi, to me, reminds me to breathe. It reminds me to breathe, to be calm. Bodhi. It's a Bodhi tree, you know? That yes, means, I was thinking that. Yeah, it means awakening. It means calm and stillness and stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to call him Bodhi. And it's just so cute. It's just system. He's just so sweet. So we have three dogs now. But it's a full house. It's a full <laughs> house. Oh, where are we going? We're not doing anything, you know? We're, we're staying home. Yeah. So might as well, right? You're, you're being, you're being in the moment. And, and you, you, you be in episodes like one of my favorite television episodes of all time oh, was yeah. the episode on Glee, when, they have, when you're in it with the choir. So beautiful. I have always wanted to sing my whole life I was like oh, I wish I could sing I wish I could sing and um that moment was so powerful because that song Imagine was uh the rights were given to um John Lennon's wife right. and um she didn't from my understanding she didn't want people to use that song so I guess Glee approached her and said this is we would like to use that song this is what we want to use it for we want to have the deaf you know, kids come in and sign it and stuff. And she was like, yeah. She said, that's exactly what John would have wanted that song to be about. And so when we did it, I had no idea that Glee was going to be such a big, huge, um, like, you know, a fascination with people. It's such a cute, cute TV show. Yeah. And um, when they did it, we all got, got emotional because it was like we were singing. And for me, it was like me standing that song and I had a couple of singers next to me that were incredible. Yeah. It was almost like they were my voice, you know, like, and I was singing and we were all singing together. And it was a really beautiful, beautiful moment. And um, I'm just so thankful for that opportunity and that experience. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with my computer here. I heard a little bump, bump. Yeah, out a little bit. Is but yeah, so it was just, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm proud of that episode. Oh, it's amazing. I could watch that over and over again, and I still tear up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, I mean, when you come in, for, well, first of all, one of my favorite movies is Hamill. Yes. I mean, the way that was done, and, and what I still, I always remember when you went to one of the characters, the sound was muffled, so the audience feels the feels it yeah. yeah oh 100 100 you know it's um they did such a great job that was such a fun production um i was in new york for a month and remember i talked about being on set it's like my favorite place to be yeah so i was in heaven for a month it was a lot of fun um the producers and the director on the show was just great and the cast we all got along we all hung out so it was really, it was there. Me and Michael Speedy, we had that banter. He was the guy that played my boyfriend in the movie. We, are, we already had that banter. So it was just so fun. And um, I loved how they were able to portray and show, oh, this is what it's like. This is what it feels like for somebody who has a hearing loss or somebody who's deaf, you know? It was just to kind of give people a little glimpse of that moment. And working with Russell was great. And oh. Russell, my first... When I first met him, he didn't come out to meet me. And I was just kind of like, oh, okay. You know, I guess he doesn't want to come out and meet me. And then our first time meeting yes. was in that scene when I first meet him. Oh. Yeah, that was our first time really meeting. So I was really awkward 
because the theme is me and my custody are in the bed, you know, and just, you know, just talking, right? And um, Russell comes in. That's the first time I actually have a first conversation with him. Wow. So it was really awkward. And I, I love that Russell did that. Looking back, I'm like, that was cool. You know, it's so that, in the moment. The awkwardness was there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you usually, when you act, how do you approach your characters? You're given a script and... You know, for me, I think acting has to come from a place of truth. It has to come from a place of truth. And I have had, I've been so lucky to have met the right people in my life, including yourself, Mr. David Zimmerman. And um, the acting classes, acting classes that we had, um, just at night, we all met up and we just played off of each other. And we just like, I miss that so much. I tell people about it and they were like, oh, that's amazing, you got to do that. And I, you know, had, I had Corey Allen, yeah. You know, like, what? That's incredible. And just to be played off each other. And I realized, you know what? Acting, to me, it's not really about acting. It's about being true and being in the moment and going with your gut and going with, you know, like your reaction, mm-hmm. your normal reaction. And I feel like for me to notice somebody who's a good actor it's not when they're acting it's when they're reacting mm. to me that's when i'm like wow that guy that that person amazing because they're reacting which means they're listening yeah they're really listening they're not thinking of my what's what's my what's my line i have to make sure i say my next line that's not important yeah. the line is not important what's important is about the connection Mm. And really listening to somebody, then you can create a beautiful moment. But if you're worried about your lines on the next page, you know, yeah. it robs it. That's so interesting how you said worried about the lines on the next page. What? You're on this page. Absolutely. This page of the breath. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And some of the best exercises that I remember um, I did with our group was that we got scripts that didn't even match. <laughs> there were no, like, I got a script, and then that's said, you got a script, you had line A, I had line B, you had line A, and it was like two completely different things. But we made it work. It made sense. Because it was this. It made sense, because it was about the connection. It wasn't about the line, you know? And so Justin and I, we, I'm so thankful, I have a wonderful husband, who is also in the business and he just, he, he, you know, he's my fire. He likes my fire. He's, he's amazing. And we talk about scenes and writing and stuff. And we have, we have a project that we're working on and we're trying to write it. We're trying to get it through and stuff. And I realized, you know what? It has to be heard. It's not supposed to be read. Yeah. Scripts are not supposed to be read. They're supposed to be spoken out loud. Yeah. Because sometimes when you read things, oh, it looks good on paper. But when you say in person, it just doesn't flow right. And I swear I can feel that. When I watch TV shows yeah. or movies, I'm like, oh, that line was awkward. Because it probably looked good on paper. Right. But it didn't fit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that, to me, is just so important, I think. I'm going to throw a word out to you. Hope, thank you so much for interpreting all this. I know it's- I know, thank you. At once. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, family, what comes to your mind? Did you hear them? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, then they came. Did you hear them? <laughs> um, unconditional love, just, love um family i've learned doesn't have to be who you're related to yeah family is your world of people who you can count on and speaking of family yeah <laughs> justin's like no no no, no. Yeah, come on in hey uh, uh, come here please no hold on come no. here okay. <laughs> <laughs> family also means chaos <laughs> beauty and chaos 
Accept <laughs> the chaos. Yes. Go through it and- Yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Um, we've been, hey, you know what, baby, bring them all out. I'm getting them. Shut okay, up. bring them all your cookies and bring them all out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cookie. Yeah, you want all your cookies? Yeah. Um, I, I, I have been, I have never known a love like this, being an only child. So I'm not used to having kids and family in my house all the time. Can Pete right come say hi? Hi! Hi! Hey, Ethan! My baby boy, Ethan. Oh, hi. Hey. How, are How are you? you? Hi. Oh. God, you're gorgeous. Look at that gorgeous family you have. Oh my God, you have an Oreo. So lucky. Oh my God. Oh, Hi. Else too. Hi. Yay. Is that Lainey? That How are you, Lainey? Yeah. Good. Good to I see you. I got cookies. Oh my God! Can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It won't. Wouldn't that one of these days we could reach into the screen and and share? Yeah. And then I could awesome. share my little guy. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> He's the one that gave you the flamingo. Remember? Yeah, it's just the flamingo. Uh-huh. Oh, how cool. So I family is loud, beautiful, chaos. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I would yeah. not trade it for the world. It's um my acting has kind of taken a step back a little bit. Yes. Because I'm raising these two. And um, it, it's hard sometimes. I, I see this. So a lot of moms, too, in the industry, you said, uh-uh, don't unplug the computer. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't know. Uh -huh. Hey, babe. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of uh, like I was really pregnant when um, there was the possibility that I could have a really good role for a television show. And they were asking me when the baby was going to be born. And time-wise, it didn't work out. Do you want to say hi really quick? This is Justin. Hey, Yay! mister. Hey. Yay. <laughs> um, so they were, they were asking, when is the baby going to be born? They were trying to figure out some time scheduling. And I realized, you know what? I can't commit. I can't do it because um, to me, they're my priority. You know, they're my priority right now. There's always time for acting. There's always time for doing stuff. But I also believe that even while you're busy being a mom, you should never give up doing what your passion is. You just got to find a different way to do it. Right. You know, like Justin and I will talk about projects. We talk about like what we're going to do when we do this and do that. And it's just, uh, you can't stop that part of you because it's what feeds you. You yeah. know, they say you have to, um, you can't give them an empty cup. You got to fill yourself first before you feed other people. And I'm so bad at that. Well, I'm so bad at that. You are feeding yourself up with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they take my cup and drink all of it and say they want more. <laughs> you know, I want more. I want more. Guess what? What? Wait, Ethan, I'm getting the word Bobby. He said this. I don't know my puppy. 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 Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, happens. it happens. It happens. It happens. Can you find the No, you can. Hey, do you want to tell the joke? The interrupting No, okay. No. So, I'm going to yeah. finish my. Go my oh, let's go, guys. Uh, I love you guys. Run, run, run. Bye, Lainey. See you later. Bye, Lainey. Say, say goodbye. Bye, Uncle David. Bye, Lainey. Bye, Minnie. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Minis! Minis! Bye! Even, Hi. With the, Hi. even with all the quarantine and stuff, Mickey and Minnie still bring them so much. Hey, come on! You know? All right. Don't touch Ali. Come on. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> yes, and I can also see the strength and this solid core that you have even more now than from before. I could see this, you know exactly where you are and who you are, whether you know it or not. Uh, I think you do, but sometimes we don't know that we're there and absolutely. we're like, I wanna be, I wanna be there, but you're there already. 
And I love it. I love it. What an amazing mother you are. <laughs> Thank you, David. You've always been a mentor to me, you know, and seriously, and like my big brother. And so it's a compliment to hear you say that because you've known me for many years, you know? So I just, I, I feel definitely, I feel a lot more, I want to say, I don't seek out people's approval that much anymore, if that makes sense. Before, it was like I was a people pleaser. I was always trying to, you know, like, oh, you know, did I, I want to do this, I want to do that, I don't want to, you know, um, um, I want to just get everybody's approval. Do they like it? Is everything okay? You know, and so now I realize that um, time is so short. Life is so short that you need to invest those kind of feelings in people who invest that in you. You know, that makes sense. It's like okay. people who um, share that same response with you, people who care about you, people who are generally have your best interests at heart. Yeah. 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 So I've I kind of um, become more, um, I don't want to say, I think it's more like um, confident in knowing that, hey, you know, if, it's, if somebody feels this way, somebody feels this way, you know, that's just the way it is. That's okay. You know, just a little bit more, um, I guess, experience you know, with conflict. And of course, you know, being a mom, I have two little ones that look up to me. I have two little ones that are, you know, every decision I make impacts them. Mm -hmm. So uh, being a mom in the entertainment industry is very, very tough. Um, but it's just uh, knowing that, that I have people who are counting on me kind of makes me feel like I really have to make sure that I know where I am. Yeah. What do you want the most at this moment in your life? I'm hoping you would ask that. Oh my gosh. Right before every um, acting class, David would ask this question. What do we want most in them? Uh, what do we want the most right now in this moment, right? Oh my gosh. <sighs> I could really go for a milkshake, but no, okay. Um, <laughs> what flavor? Oh, what flavor? Mm, I love Oreo cookie. Oreo cookie milkshake is so good. It's so good. I haven't had one in so long. Um, but yeah, let's do what I want the most in this moment right now. I think I would like to be heard. I would like to be heard. I feel like right now I need to tell people that it's going to be okay. Everything happening right now with the coronavirus and everything that it's really impacted the entertainment industry. Agent, agencies have had to cut down different departments. A lot of my friends that are actors are not working right now, they're struggling. And I just feel like I just wanna say, you know what, if you're in that situation and if you're in that position, whether you're a mom or whether you're not able to fully do what your passion is, it's okay to be in the moment and just embrace it and use it maybe to help get you with what you want when things kind of calm down a little bit. But you feel like you just want to be heard, you know, because I think maybe I needed somebody to tell me that. Yeah. Well, you're definitely heard. Mm -hmm. And I definitely love you. I love you too. There's no habit It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people Living life for today. Imagine, Imagine there's no, no countries. It is not hard, hard to, to do. do. Nothing to Nothing kill to or, kill or die, for. die for. And no 
Uh-huh. 